On today's episode of Don't Blame Me, we have Megan Tonjes as a guest and we talk about friends forcing other friends to take birth control and also what happens when you're a sugar baby and your sister's going to tell your parents. Thanks to Audible for supporting Don't Blame Me. For a free audiobook with a 30-day free trial, go to audible.com slash blame or text blame to 500 500. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Don't Blame Me. And today, if you're watching this, you'll already know. But if you're just listening to this, we have an exciting guest. It's Megan Tondas. Hello. Do you want to know a fun fact? You're one of the first people I ever subscribed to on the internet. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Like in when did you start, when did you start your channel? 2006. So I so if I graduated high school in 2011. Okay. And I started watching YouTube when I was a sophomore in high school. Okay. So I started watching your channel in 2009, wow. 10, 9, like 2007, 2008. Wow. Yeah. Early Tonjes. I think I was subscri subscribed to like four people. Oh my God. It was God. you, JP Metz. Oh my God. Um, it must have been like soundly awake at yes, that point. Yes, soundly awake. <laughs> and um, uh, I want to say I was subscribed to Smosh and then I unsubscribed because I was like, this is not content for me. Fair, fair. But yeah, that was like, you guys were wow. the only people I watched. We're going back right now. <laughs> yeah. So that's my embarrassing. That's so funny. Well, I'm still friends with all of those people. That makes me really fucking happy. Nikki lives here in Los Angeles. Wait. He lives like down the street from me. <gasps> we still make videos together. That Much me... better produced videos, but, but still. I mean, it's just like, I, you're literally who I think of when I think of like OG YouTube. Oh my God. I'll take it. I mean, that's such a compliment. <laughs> I, I, and I didn't unsubscribe. Oh my God, I must have done something right. Yeah, co consistently. <laughs> consistently. Always putting up videos constantly. No, I think it's awesome because there's so many channels that I like had subscribed to forever ago. I'm like, whatever happened to those people? But oh, then it's yeah. like, then there's ones you're like, oh no, it's like, I can be like, wow, this is creepy. I feel like I've watched your entire life, but like I didn't stop watching your entire life. It's okay. Well, that's good too, because I've changed a lot of content in the past few years. So like I started off doing music and I still am working on music, but I kind of veered away from that recently. So it's nice to know that you But you around. have a beautiful voice. Thank you. We won't make you sing. Don't worry. I mean, I don't even know what I would sing. It's like, do people <laughs> do that at parties too? And you're like, oh, I sing. And they're like, sing something for us. I'm the worst kind of musician. Like I'm a musician that hates other musicians and is annoyed by oh, other- Oh, that's like, how I feel about actors. So it's the, Okay, good. <laughs> I, good. Then you connect I, with it. I hate everyone. It's like every time I'm at like playlist and there's always that one dude with an acoustic guitar Ugh. that goes to the pool. I'm like, oh, fucking die, I hate him please. for you too. Uh, it's the worst. It's so. super annoying. Anytime it's I was bad. like, everyone's like, I can play the guitar and they just like pick it up and start strumming it. I have one friend who does that and it's fine. But then any other guy when they're in a situation with him and they even slightly or anything musical, they'll just start doing whatever they can, like taking like and just like tapping on the table. <laughs> and he's like, so I just because I brought my guitar here. Now you have to pretend drum. Everything. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, life isn't quite like pitch perfect. So I don't just start breaking out in song often. But um, beep, 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 that cup song. You know, we're, well, you, maybe next time we can next work time. on it. We do a little duo. Oh, yeah. I'm great. <laughs> I'm a fantastic singer. You told me that earlier. I told you I can carry a tune with auto-tune as long as you don't put me on Good Morning America. That's, I'm into it. I'm into it. That's yeah. like, I think that's like the extent of like, either you can sing or you can carry a tune and you should just never perform live. <laughs> that's where I'm at. Where I'm like... With any assistant, I can look. I, I can look great. I understand or sound that. Great. I understand that. I think one of the things is like as a musician, I think there's just different reasons why people do music and what they get out of it. And it's not that I like am anti being the center of attention. Like I do love to kind of be in the focus sometimes. But I'm not one of those people. It's like I just need to perform constantly. I need that validation. I love writing songs when it's three a.m. and I'll write a song and play it once and then never play it for anyone. Like it's very. Much, it's much more therapeutic yeah, like for cathartic me. Cathartic. As yeah. opposed to and, like. Performing is fun and I love performing, but it's not, I don't feel the desire to like every time my group of friends sits down, like, hold on, pay attention <laughs> to me. Let me play songs just in case you forgot I can sing. It's like, it just feels gross and icky to me. Yeah. Well, that's how you know you're actually a really good singer too. Okay, like, you it. don't need like the validation of all these people. Like, it gets in forgot. Remember, I can still sing. Yeah. yeah. I, I oftentimes I'm like, I'd rather just you think I'm funny than anything yeah, else. And best compliment. I think go. it's definitely by far the best compliment. There you go. Uh, well, guys, you're listening to the podcast or you're watching it on YouTube. Um, and yeah, so this is Don't Blame Me. It's an advice podcast. You guys call in, you tell us things in your life and we attempt to give you some advice. Sometimes attempt. it works out well. All the time I end up being a bitch. <laughs> like no matter what, I hate somebody by the end of every call. Sometimes it's the caller. Um, it's okay. But yeah. So if you okay. guys want to call in and leave voicemails, the phone number is 310-694-0976. Is that wrong? Um, no, oh, that was perfect. Oh, you gave it. me a look. You're oh, like, I know. Sorry. I was okay. listening to another one where you you were you got it right, but you struggled through it, and so I was waiting. I do. I well, usually it's always I, a struggle. 
That's my entire life. To Excuse be fair. me. Oh, also, this person giving snarky fucking comments is Mel. Say hi. I was going to say, wow. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> um, yeah, I usually have to close my eyes, but because we just okay. recorded another episode, like I was, I, I was okay. Um, I respect it. Thanks. You're welcome. I respect the struggle, the come up, <laughs> oh, the struggle, the hustle. Um, and if you're an international caller, um, you can send us a voice memo to meganpodcast at gmail.com and uh, make sure it's Mel doesn't want it to be too long because apparently some of you guys have been leaving. Um, we, we have a strict like two and a half minute limit on our podcast because uh, I do That's... a podcast called Adventures in Ruminating with my roommate Keith and he's in charge of the questions in the advice section mm. and so the thing is they know not to send daddy Keith too long of an email because he's just not he's just gonna not, not read it well yeah but they o- they always start the email with I'm so sorry I hope this isn't too long and then he just gets frustrated he's like you've already made it longer than it needed to be <laughs> I just need the question. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, it's three minutes. I think that's plenty of time. That's good. Yeah, you can that's, do if it. You can't, if you can't tell me your problems in three minutes, then they're not worth talking about. Or they're, yeah, either you're you're blowing it out of proportion or I'm not the person to call. Yeah, like, there's therapy. Yeah, is, is it the sounds next step. like something massive. Um, but yeah, so we're going we're gonna to get into these calls. I think I might be gay, but... Okay, so I like this guy. <laughs> I like this guy. I I broke up with my old boyfriend of like nine months because I thought I was gay. And then he, and then I, I started liking this other guy. And I was like, well, maybe I'm not gay. I like him. But I can't kiss him. And I can't like be really physical. Like I'm attracted to him. But I don't know. I don't know what to do. Because I don't know, this is really embarrassing for me because <laughs> I don't, I haven't really talked to people about this. So I'm hoping I can get your advice, even though I'm putting this on the internet, <laughs> um, your personal advice, because, because I don't know what to do and I don't know, really know what I am. and I know I'm still discovering myself and everything. Do you think I should continue my relationship with him or like not, t- not really date anybody until I can figure it out? I don't know. Oh my gosh, to be 16 again. Yeah, that's a doozy. Wow, she's already been in longer relationships than I've been at 32. Oh, <laughs> I'm I mean, already impressed. Same. At 16, I was like, I love the Jonas Brothers and I just want to have my first kiss. <laughs> um, fuck. Oh, I mean, man. I think the first thing I'd say is nobody can like define your sexuality and like what you identify as. Um, so I don't want to say that like I'm trying to define you by this, but I think mm. I would say um, obviously people go through like, I mean, sexuality is a spectrum in general. Like you can be attracted to guys and girls. You can mm-hmm. be, I mean, people are attracted to anything. Like that. it's, I don't really, my personal belief is like, I I have always identified as straight because I've never been sexually or romantically attracted to a woman. But like, that doesn't mean that there's a woman, there's not a woman on the planet that I wouldn't be sexually. Like, I'm sure there is someone that would make me feel that way. I think it's so much more about like, being attracted to pe- like the person mm. and who they are is the same reason why as a straight person, I'm not attracted to every guy I meet. Like I'm, there are so many more like yeah. factors that go into that. Um, so I would say, uh, but I don't know. I feel like it's, it's worth to talk about the idea of like being um, a romantic. I don't know. Like, again, like it's not Absolutely. like putting that on you. Cause if you've had romantic feelings for someone, bef- if you've had like sexual attraction feelings, someone before I would say if you felt sexually attracted to somebody else before and like wanted to be intimate and physical with them, then, and then you have this guy who you really like and you like for his personality, but you're not sexually attracted to. Mm. I, I don't know if that means you don't actually like that guy or if maybe have you felt those sexual urges towards other people? Yeah. I guess the question is, well, first of all, you went right to being like, I must be gay. You might just be bisexual. Yeah. There, there are a whole variety of things that you could mm-hmm. be. And you're also so young. So it's like, you're going to go through this. This is going to be a process that continues as you get older. And you're going to figure out new things and new people that you're attracted to. And and I also think that, you know, you're kind of jumping I, I from, from your question. I'm gathering that the course of whatever relationship you were in was at its end. And I don't know if you met someone else, like maybe a girl or someone else that you were attracted to, and that kind of made you question it. But to go into this other relationship where you're not really sexually attracted to them, you don't feel comfortable being physical with them, but you're attracted to the personality. I think you might, it might be 
a, a version of being asexual. It could also be that this is just a friend. Mm-hmm. It could be someone that you're really attracted to, but it's not quite at that level to date them or to be physical. And I do think that if you're in a relationship and they're expecting a certain level of physicality and that's not something you feel comfortable with, I think that you need to take a step back and say, you know what, I'm kind of figuring out my stuff right now. I really like you. I want to be friends. I want to hang out. I don't feel comfortable with this other stuff. And I don't think that you should go along with it just because that fits into the mold of what you think a relationship should be. It sounds like you're confused. You're figuring things out and you have so much time. Like Mm -hmm. you're 16, just be friends and get to know this person and And don't feel like you have to be like in a boyfriend, girlfriend situation. You get to explore and figure out what it is you want. And you're, you probably are going to meet people that you should meet later on in life that are going to kind of influence that more than high school. Yeah. And I also don't think that you need to be like, oh no, I shouldn't date until I figure out my sexuality. I think like so much of figuring out what you're into Mm -hmm. is meeting other people and like, yeah, through dating and all that stuff. Like I don't, I think like you can have these hypothetical things, like thoughts of being like, well, what if I am? What if I'm all this stuff? And like, you don't, first of all, you don't need to label yourself at all. Mm -hmm. And I think as opposed to just like dating to figure out a label to give yourself to tell other people, I think you just need to figure out what it is that you're into and who you're into. And by doing that, I think it's like saying yes to things that you want to say yes to Mm -hmm. without in the back of your head being like, but does this mean this? Like none of it has to mean anything. Mm -hmm. It can just mean that you're like just trying to figure out who you're attracted to and what you're into. Um, And I just, I think the thing, exactly like you're saying, there is somewhat of um, an association of physicality when it comes to a relationship. So I think if you don't feel comfortable with that, then making, then letting him know, because it's also just not fair for somebody else if they think that you're, you guys are going down this other path Mm. and you're not including him on like, oh, I'm not sexually attracted to you. And then he ends up putting himself out there thinking that you guys are on the same page. So I think um, you don't owe anyone like an explanation of like, like, you don't have to tell him why you're not feeling it. I'm not into this because of X, Y, and Z. It could just be like, you know what? I think I just want to get to know you and slow this down a little bit and figure out what I want. I think you can own own that feeling. And then, yeah, I would just say, just like take your time. It's not, um, I mean, I also have friends who like very much identified one way or another and then ended up as they got older dating a woman or dating so a man. Friends. And like maybe it was the only person of the same sex that they dated or they've only ever dated same sex people then ended up dating someone of the different sex. And it's just something like being open to it. You're then able to realize it's so much less about someone's like genitals and what someone ide- or even what someone identifies as as is it about it, as as much as much as it is about them as a person. Yeah. And I think that's kind of like letting yourself meet all kinds of people. And I think that's how you you'll find you'll find out the kind of people you're attracted to, not necessarily like man or woman. Yeah, yeah. I think it's all about figuring out the kind of personality and the traits that you're attracted to and then kind of paring it down from there. And then also making sure that you're not like closing yourself off to who you can be attracted to while also not deciding like, oh, well, I I don't know who I'm attracted to, so I can't even focus on this person. Mm-hmm. Like I would just be patient with yourself. And also, you know, something that I think happens a lot in high school, but I see it even as we get older, is this idea that like, well, I'm I'm hanging out with you and I'm dating you. So we have to be boyfriend, girlfriend or boyfriend, boyfriend or girlfriend, girlfriend. Like you can just casually date and get to know people and you don't have to be claimed by anyone. Mm-hmm. Like, ju- you know, focus on your studies. OK, yeah. school's important. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and there's a lot of other people that are gonna come around. They're going to give you that same spark that you're looking for. Yeah. Yeah. I found this uh, great infographic um, that. What's the infographic? About, it's like a graphic. It's an info, it has information it's info on in it. a graphic. Yeah. Okay. I'll put it down <laughs> in the show notes. <laughs> yeah, I'll put it in the show notes. But it talks about the different types of attraction, sexual attraction, romantic mm. attraction, mm-hmm. crushes, squishes, sensual Squish. attraction, and I'm aesthetic. sorry, you can't glaze over squishes. Yeah, squishes we have to focus on. Squish is an a romantic crush, a desire for a strong platonic relationship with someone. That makes me think of like oh God, the, the I issue it. I have with that is like when I think of squish, I'm like, oh, a baby. And then you read the definition. I'm like, no, I don't have a crush on a baby. <laughs> yeah. And then it's like aesthetic crush. attraction. Yeah. So, aesthetic attraction? Yeah, where you just like like to look at someone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I feel like Margot Robbie. Yeah. yeah. Oh, love. I also love to watch her perform. Mm-hmm. Great actress. 
I'm sorry. <laughs> just going to slide yeah. that in there. Real just going to slide that in there. Mark, you want to go on the podcast? But I, I think there's a lot of pressure on like, if you look at someone and find them attractive or can acknowledge that they're attractive, all of a sudden it calls into question your sexuality yeah. and who and I want to be with. And it's, it's perfectly fine to be able to look at people and say, they're attractive. I like them. And to not necessarily make that like, this is who I have to date. This is who I have to have sex with. This is relationship material. Like you can just realize beauty in all its different forms, yeah. whether it's, you know, rom- romantically or sensually or sexually or whatever. Um, and I, and I think that's part of growing up is mm-hmm. you just figure out where your lines are, where your boundaries are and what feels good. And that, and also have the freedom to change that whenever you want. Very much agreed. Okay. Awesome. Should we go on to the next one? Mm-hmm. Yeah. On to the next call. Hey Megan, my name is I'm 15 years old and I'm from Georgia. My dad died two years ago. Since then, my mom got a new boyfriend who she loves, and my brother and my sister love. I'm the only one who doesn't like him. I get weird vibes from him, and I feel as if he's using my family. I don't mean that he's a gold digger since he's rich, but I feel as if he uses my mom for you know what. Since she got with him, I found out that I found many toys and weird, and it weirded the crap out of me. Um, they go on crazy trips, even though my mom claims that we're poor. She went to Mexico in December and recently just got back from a trip from Punta Conta, which is in the Dominican Republic. I was like, whatever, I guess we'll be fine with their relationship. But then I was like, but then I found out that they were actually having an open relationship. But he, he has an open relationship. My mom doesn't like dating other people. She's always just been with one person only. And that was my dad. But once he died, my mom just dated him, and she's just, she's, she's out of her open relationship with him. I do not like him. I hate him so much, and I really just don't know what to do. I just don't trust him with anything in my life, and if my mom and him ever do get really serious, I don't think I can ever trust him in my life ever, and I couldn't call him dad. Ooh, <laughs> man. This breaks my heart. There's so many levels to this. First of all, just don't go through your parents' like. Oh, don't drawers. open the drawers. <laughs> like, just don't do it. I've done it. Like, it's it's, it's just not worth it. <laughs> like, you're if you think you might find, you're gonna find it. If you think yep. you might find something, you're find like, this it. here seems like it's so when you're a kid, you're looking for Christmas or like Hanukkah presents, and you're like, mm-hmm. I feel like it'd be hidden here. Yeah. Uh, if you're like thinking like, ooh, I feel like my parents would hide. X, Y, and Z here, or like any of my parents. They're, that's that's right. Ooh, I went through my parents' stuff all the time. Like the minute they left the house, I was like, "Let me go through this closet. <laughs> Let me go through these photos." And, and you, you and you find, I wasn't necessarily scarred, but I, I think that I was probably for how young I was and my lack of understanding really about sex. I probably found things that made me super uncomfortable. And then you don't really know how to bring that up because it's like, I'm not going to tell you, "Hey, mom and dad, I found a vibrator." In your exactly. Room. Like, it's not going to be a conversation that you feel comfortable having. I think there are a few things going on here. I think one, you know, it hasn't been that long since you lost your dad. And I think that there's always going to be that struggle of seeing a new person in your life and your mom's life and feeling like someone that you loved is being replaced or forgotten. I think that's, that's just something that's part of this entire situation. And not to say that maybe you're not actually getting creepy vibes from someone Mm -hmm. that's very possible. And I'm very into like following your intuition, but that may be influencing this, this initial desire to not like this person. And then I also feel like there's a huge discomfort with the sexual aspect of your, of your mom's relationship with this man. And I think part of that is being really young and not having experience with many of those relationships, but also your mom, and this is, Ooh, this is a lesson you're going to learn growing mm-hmm. up. Someone, this is something that I've learned is that your parents are people mm-hmm. and they have independent relationships outside of you and their love for you. And it doesn't necessarily affect that. And while you are at the beginning of your life and you might be uncomfortable with, you know, if you're finding toys or you under, you're finding out about this open relationship and it makes you feel really, you know, defensive of your mom and really upset about certain things. The reality is I think you know, you don't know your mom, but she probably was with one person. She's met someone else and she's exploring that relationship and figuring out what that looks like for her. And so I think sometimes, I mean, even as adults, a lot of people are very uncomfortable about the idea of open relationships Mm -hmm. or polyamory or anything like that. But the biggest thing to take out of that is that as an adult, you get to tailor your relationship to fit what it is you want and you get to explore the way that you want. So I'm sure that if this is an open relationship where 
maybe you don't know that your mom's dating other people or seeing other people, but he is, and that makes you very upset. That's probably a conversation they've had, and that's probably something that they're okay with in their relationship. And so you kind of have to let go of that control that you want or like that inclusion of like understanding what it is. Sometimes you're just not going to quite understand what it is that your mom's looking for or <clears throat> what she's exploring in this relationship. I think that, oh, it's so hard. I don't have a teenager. Thank God. Um, cool. Thank God. Uh, so I don't even know what that conversation would look like, but I do think that this is something worth on some level talking to your mom about of like, I'm just feeling really uncomfortable. Maybe not straight come out and say like, Hey, I went through your stuff yeah. and I found out you're doing all these things. I, but you know, if you have heard that this is an open relationship or what's going on, maybe it's something to bring up to your mom and say, I just want to understand more about this. You don't have to tell me obviously details you want to tell me, but I'm growing up. I'm a young person. I want to understand what you're going through because otherwise I have a very limited view of this man that you love and I want to understand it. And I think it's, this is part of you going through, like mourning your dad, being uncomfortable with your mom, being with someone else, and also being at a place where you haven't experienced a lot of these kinds of relationships. And so it feels really uncomfortable and weird. Yeah. No, I, I, I mean, I agree with everything you're saying. I think <clears throat> um, the lesson also here, I would just wouldn't snoop. I think that's <laughs> like, like... Don't look for it unless you want to find exactly. it. Exactly. I think I would say that. And I also think, um, I think it's, I think it's hard to, because ju exactly like you're saying, it's very much, you're feeling really protective of your mom. Yeah. And your mom, I'm sure is like a badass, strong woman. And she's raised a daughter who's like <laughs> perceptive and wanting to, and is curious and learning all this stuff. Like Good. she's a great, I'm sure she's a fantastic woman and she she, as you lost your dad, she also lost her husband. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something we can't, um, we can't control how other people grieve and how other people deal with this kind of stuff. And, um, n no matter what, ultimately, I think you want your mom to be happy. And mm -hmm. I think that's what you need to focus on. And I'm totally with you on the intuition of you feel like getting creepy vibes and stuff. And I think also like you're saying, like, you don't really want to have to like open up to him. I, that's mm -hmm. your call. That's totally yeah. your call. And your mom, I'm sure will be understanding of that. But I think you also need to put your mom's happiness. And if you find that she's really happy and this might be a thing that, I mean, God, I can't imagine if I was that age and like learning about all this stuff, like I wouldn't want to know. Overwhelming. Yeah. But I think you have to just take it as, is she happy? And also like, do you, you want your mom to be happy? I'm you, you want your, your mom lost her husband. You guys, you lost a really huge part of your family. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's something like you want her just because she might fall in love again or date somebody else, it doesn't mean that she loved your dad any less or anything like that. If anything, she's your, she's going to be a much happier person. And I'm also sure that's what your dad would have wanted is for your mom to be happy and to find love again. That doesn't mean that anyone's ever, like you're saying, ever going to replace him. Mm -hmm. It just means that like, she doesn't want to be lonely. And I think again, also, um, it's, you can't, you don't ever really know the intimacies and details of yeah. anyone's relationship and her having an open relationship I get being defensive of her and being like, well, she would never want that. Mm -hmm. It's also like, there's no shame in that. There's no mm -hmm. shame in like wanting to be with multiple people or being attracted to multiple people and not being in a monogamous relationship. And so I think if you don't, if you try not to look at that in kind of like a dirty, gross way, mm -hmm. that's something your mom would never be interested in. Um, I think maybe just knowing that she can take care of herself and yeah. like handle it. But I think, yeah, if you want to talk to her, I would bring it up in more of a, Hey, I'm really sorry. I figured out some stuff. And I just want and, to ask you questions about it. Yeah. And I want to get some clarification on it because I don't know why I, I haven't been able, I don't really feel like a, I don't really I'm not crazy. Like, like this guy that you're seeing a lot. And I'd really like to see, hear what you see in him so much. Yeah. Oh, these are adult conversations yeah. to have. I think, I yeah, you just need to, in the same way that like one day or now, even as you're exploring your sexuality and what you want in a relationship and the kind of person you want to be with, I think it's really hard for us to extend that same courtesy to our parents, mm -hmm. but it's important. Like if this was the only person she's been with and she's moved into another relationship, she's going to try things that she likes, doesn't like, figures it out. This might be the person, it might not be the person. And I think you just got to give her space in the same way that you're going to want it as mm -hmm. you get older. And also it's a great place to be in. Like I'm in my 30s and I can talk to my mom about sex and it's like the greatest thing. Ever. <laughs> Well, Incredible. now they're going to do it just a lot younger. Uh, yeah, it's true. Ooh. Ooh. Again, so glad I don't have a teenager. Yeah, don't snoop. <laughs> don't snoop because you'll find it and you'll be, you'll really regret finding it. <laughs>
Okay, on to the next call. Hi, Megan. I was calling in because I could use a little help on a roommate situation. I'm 20, and I'm in college right now, and I have two roommates, um, and they share a room, and I have my own room. So um, one of them is in a relationship. She's been in a relationship for a little over a year now, and my other roommate and I found out back in November that she's not taking her birth control pills regularly. And this is kind of an issue because she stays over at her boyfriend's almost every night, and we're pretty sure they're having, like, daily sex. Um, so we've talked to her about it a few times. We tried to get her to take the pill. We would monitor her, ask her every day if she was taking it, make her take it in front of us. But she keeps laughing it off and saying it's not a big deal because they use the pull-out method, and she thinks that's a viable form of birth control. <clears throat> um, their relationship's been in kind of a rocky patch. They were having fights about moving in together and stuff. So we're kind of worried about what this would do to him if he ever happened to find out that they broke up or that she's not taking her pill. Um, we all, he, she also told us stories about how he was really paranoid about the pill in the beginning and how he would ask her if she was taking it because he was worried about what would happen if, he missed, if she missed one. And she even missed one one time, and he wanted her to take Plan B because he was so concerned about it. So he still asked her about it, and she lies to him now and says that she is taking it even though she's not. And it's really concerning that she's putting both of them at risk of pregnancy because she won't take the pill regularly. We've asked her to talk to her doctor about getting a new prescription because part of the reason is she said this one hurts her stomach, but she refuses to do it, refuses to get an IUD or any other form of birth control because she likes having control over taking the pill every day. Um, we got back from winter break. We haven't asked her about it since. We haven't seen her that much, but we're pretty sure she's not taking it still because we found unopened packages of birth control and she should be out by now. Um, but we're at this point not really sure what to do because we don't know if we should tell him. We're not that good of friends with him either, so it's not like we can just go up to him and tell him what's going on, and we don't know if it's our place to potentially ruin their relationship. So what do you think we should do? Or make room for a bastinet. <laughs> yeah. You should do absolutely nothing. This is not your fucking problem at all. <laughs> You're so direct. so <laughs> not your fucking problem. Like... Ooh. I'm so sorry. It's when I turn into the bitch to the person who called. Here, here it comes. It's so not your problem. And hmm. it's just not. And uh, I'm definitely understand being of, again, not to be like ageist or whatever, but getting into a point where you, you, I don't know, I want to say like you have the upper hand when you can look at a, like a situation from and see the outside perspective and just really come in with your input and your advice. Mm -hmm. That's not, and this is an entire fucking podcast, but you guys ask for my advice. Okay. So like, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> It's not your problem. And it's not, even though she's mm -hmm. your friend and she might get pregnant, that's her problem. It no, has nothing to do with you guys. And all you guys are doing is just riding her ass on doing this. And th it's just like, it's not your place. You don't tell her, you don't tell her boyfriend. If she wants to not do this, this is her life. If she learns the hard way, great. That's her lesson. You can't prevent people from fucking up. You can't prevent people from making mistakes or like getting themselves into situations they can't. It's like when, mm. like, it's just going to happen. And whether or not you're able to prevent this for as long as possible, you're not going to be around to monitor and you shouldn't. No. Like, this is your friend. This is not, you're not babysitting, making sure a kid doesn't eat a Lego. Like, <laughs> this is your fucking friend. And if she wants to not take birth control, great, cool. Do you get to be a god mom? Like, buy a cute baby <laughs> outfit. Like, if she's going to fucking get pregnant, let her fucking get pregnant. <laughs> It's not your responsibility. You're not a condom. Like you can't prevent this. That's true. Wow. It makes me so, I would get Yo. so fucking annoyed <laughs> if I was friends. No offense. First of all, I had, I had a roommate that used to like, if I asked her, if I told her it was her turn to do, to do the dishes, <laughs> she took that as like an attack. And so she wouldn't do the dishes. So I can't even imagine the next level of like every day. Like, did you take your birth control? First She's of like, all, I'm going to stop taking my birth control if you're asking every day. That's literally what I would do. Me. Like you're driving me fucking crazy. Now I'm like, no, I'm not fucking taking it. I mean, do I think she's being smart about it? Absolutely not. I think that like, if you are someone who just, it's not, you're not good at taking the pill on time and blah, blah, blah. And someone else is involved in a relationship with you that is paranoid about you taking the pill and they don't have control over what you're doing to prevent pregnancy. 
Like I, I get it. I'm, I have one of those, um, I have the next plan on. So the little, oh, like it goes in your arm. Oh, and so me. I know, I mean, I might get it out cause I don't know if feel I feel it? about it. I can't, I mean, you can't probably feel it through here, but I'll let you feel it later. Okay. It just feels like oh. a little matchstick that's like under your skin. <laughs> uh, everyone here is shaking their head, but like, listen, I lived it and I survived. Yeah, I had yeah. To, <laughs> um, so I think that there are other options for someone that struggles with, um, you know, taking the pill every day and, and doesn't want to get pregnant it kind of sounds like she's just, she's being very reckless about it. And unfortunately it is one of the situations where like, you're going to learn the hard way probably. I mean, I, knowing me, I would just make sure there's a lot of morning after pills in the apartment. Like yeah, just like just have a little, st a little stash. I mean, but also her boyfriend at the same time is not incredibly smart either to think that like, <laughs> so well, I'm, a, I'm confused about her taking the pill, but the pullout method, baby girl, <laughs> Google that. Cause that does not work. It's not like, a method. It's not a method. It's, it's a move. It's, it's, it's a move. It's, it's a move a method. that's going to get you pregnant. Yes. Okay. So it's not, it's just not a hundred percent. So, you know, again, this is one of those things where like make risky decisions, things happen, there's consequences, but as her friend, all you can really do is provide her with the information, provide her with support and just pray that she doesn't get knocked up. So you have to find another roommate for this apartment because <laughs> rent is expensive. Super expensive. So yeah, I think that you guys are just, my initial reaction is like, y'all need to get a hobby. Oh my like God. you need to find something yes. else or other relationships to focus on. I understand your concern, but the concern has gone to a whole new level of like micromanaging control and it's you're only going to have her resenting you and mm -hmm. lying to you and it's going to continue to piss you off and you're going to resent her. And it's just a bad yeah. cycle. Your roommates, you're obligated to live together under a lease for a certain amount of time. And if you're friends on top of that, awesome. But beyond that, you have to let people live their lives and make mistakes or not mistakes that they're going to make. Yeah. And she's also not going to, this is not, like, she's not going to thank you for you micromanaging her for not getting pregnant that she's going to take that as her all of her own accord of being like, yeah, no, I didn't get pregnant at no point. Is she ever going to be like, you know what? Thank you so much for like texting me every five minutes, reminding me to take my birth control and like crushing it up and putting it in my pudding cup. Like I really, that meant a lot to me. She's never going to like, either she's going to get pregnant and be like, wow, fuck. I really fucked up. I'm so sorry. I should have listened to you. Or she's not going to get pregnant and she's never going to like appreciate you yeah. guys hovering and doing all of this stuff. It's taking up so much time for you and your friend. It like is. that's so much effort and time. And all you're doing is pushing her away. Like you're yeah. not, it's not like, well, we're making sure our friend doesn't get pregnant. Well, while you're making sure your friend doesn't get pregnant, you're also losing your friend because she's probably getting like, driven insane by this. And she's not going to come talk to you when she is dealing with an issue because now she's going to expect to, aha, we told you exactly. so. And at that point, like she's, you're going to lose her in this entire thing. So yeah. it's just one of those, those realities that you just can't control micromanage what other people are doing with their lives, whether it's safe or smart or mm -hmm. not. And I really would not reach out to this boyfriend no. and, and say anything to him. I just think you're you're gonna cause a breakup. Her hating you, her moving out. And you it's have to just, pay, someone else is gonna have to pay rent to your place. It's just a lot. Yeah. So it's, and if he was that concerned, he would be wearing a condom. He would be wearing a condom. <laughs> yeah. If he's really that worried. So I just I, I think they're just being kind of young and stupid. And, yeah. And they're gonna they're gonna figure it out or not. I remember the same roommate that wouldn't do dishes. I remember my roommate and I, we shared a room and we, she would leave and it just became like this, uh, we were paying attention to like how she was spending money, right? Like she doesn't have any money, but then like we find all these like receipts and credit Ugh. card bills and things like that. And I remember us at the time in like our early twenties feeling like obligated to have that information and to like judge it. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm older, I'm just like, who gives a shit? You were just ignoring all the problems that you had to deal with that you didn't want to deal with. Yeah. You were just being gossipy little assholes. Mm -hmm. So let people yeah. do what they're going to do. And if you feel like you need to have one conversation and just be like, yo, I'm never going to say this again. Take your fucking birth control. But like, also, if you don't want to and you end up getting pregnant, I will totally take you to Planned Parenthood to discuss your options. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All you can do is provide support. Exactly. All you can do is provide support. And yeah. But don't tell her you're not going to be friends with her. Like, well, we can't be friends with you because you have reckless sex and it really gives me anxiety. Oh, you're probably going to have reckless sex too if you haven't already. And also, you're probably not going to be friends with this person in five years anyway. <laughs> so stop stressing yourself out. True. <laughs> Good God. On to the next call. Hi, Megan. I'm 21, and as a kid who just turned one two months ago with my ex, and basically, um, when we found out I was pregnant, I was thinking of adoption, and he said, no, keep, keep it. And um, we did. He stuck around for five months, and he kind of said that he couldn't do the whole parenting thing. And I was, okay, fine. And he agreed to pay, like, child support and, like, send money if we ever need anything. And two weeks went by, 
when he said he couldn't do it anymore. And he kind of went MIA. Um, he left and blocked me on everything. And I was a single mom. My kid was five months at that time. And I was a single mom for about four months. And then I met a guy. He's really sweet and kind of my boyfriend right now. And I love him, and he loves my kid, my kid loves him, and we just um, had a birthday party for my kid. And why well, posted pictures on my social media, because why not capture the moment? And suddenly he decided to appear, and all of a sudden he wants to get back into my kid's life. He was gone for about six months seven months, and now, like, I don't know if he's jealous that I'm with someone or that his kid is spending time and enjoying his time with someone who isn't his dad, but I don't know what I should do because I really love my boyfriend, my current boyfriend, and my ex. We didn't really leave on bad terms, but I kind of, if you went MIA on that, I don't want you near my kid. That's a tough situation. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, first of all, your ex sounds like trash, to be <laughs> fair. And he luckily gave you a great child that apparently like is loving and all these great mm -hmm. things. And you've done the best you can with the situation he's given you, which was not a mature way to deal with anything. No. If you're not feeling a relationship or you're freaking out, you don't start blocking someone on social media that you have a baby with mm -hmm. and disappear. And then have the audacity to come back into the situation when you know that she's happy with someone else. Yeah. Mm -mm, no, 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 no. So I think my advice is you're happy in the relationship that you're in. This person loves your child. You love this person. And I would continue with that relationship. This guy wanted to be a part of your child's life. Absolutely. A hundred percent is he saw photos of this mm -hmm. birthday party and was like, absolutely not. So no one's swooping in to be the dad to my kid. And also I, I read something yesterday where someone was like, this is, this is something that men do. Like they'll get you, they'll get you pregnant because they, without marrying you or having any kind of other connection to you, because then they have a hold on you for the, for the entirety oh, of your life. Good God. And it's like a way of having control and power over someone. And, 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 you know, this sounds yeah. like that kind of situation where it's like saying you're all into something and then not actually being adult enough to deal with it in a mature way. Like you, it, you have a kid in the world now. You don't have the luxury of, I just want to like go and do whatever yeah. and not pay attention to how it affects other people. Um, so I would say in this relationship, I would also make it, this is going to require a lot of strength on your part because this person is probably going to like gaslight you, manipulate you, mm -hmm. make you feel guilty about certain things. And I think you need to be very clear that like, Hey, we have a kid together. We do not have a relationship together. And so you have all the rights to be a part of your child's life, but you also will be financially a part of that child's life and emotionally part of that child's life. And that is not going to affect this situation right here. I'm happy doing my thing. Want the same thing for you. Care about you as a person, but we're not going to use this kid as like a pawn back and mm -hmm. forth to, because you're jealous about a certain situation. So I think setting up the boundaries and even legally yeah. making sure that the boundaries are set and that he knows that this is how it goes um, is going to save you a lot of heartache in the long run, but you have to be prepared that this person is not a mature person and he's just going to throw himself against the gates of whatever, trying to see how he can get in and how he can manipulate you and how he can screw up your relationship. So you and your boyfriend have to be prepared for that and be like a team mm -hmm. and a steady friend together. Yeah, I fully, I agree with all of that. I think also it's um, him wanting to be a part of your kid's life that that can't be a wishy-washy thing. Like mm -mm. it needs to be, he's either going to be a stable, consistent part of your kid's life or he's not, he d shouldn't be allowed to be part of your kid's life. Especially when he's this young growing up, like people, I mean, like people talk about like when your kid fucking naps on like the wrong schedule and it fucks up everything for months and all that stuff. And I'm like, if you're someone who wants to walk in, walk out, walk in, walk out, that's not a stable environment to raise a kid. And sure, his DNA is a part of this kid and made this kid, but you're the one who's raising him or it's her son, right? Son. Yep. Yeah. You're the one who's raising him. And so ultimately you get to decide what are the good and bad influences that are allowed in your kid's life. And if your current boyfriend is a great guy who really loves your kid and is really there for him and is steady and stable, he can be in your kid's life. If your ex wants to be a part of his, like of your son's life in this 
on again, off again kind of thing, you need to set the parameters. Like, are you okay with like, okay, well, I don't want you to be around all the time because like, I don't want to spend a lot of time with you, but we can have like, le- like legally setting up, you get to, we get to spend this time, this time and this time, but like, you don't get to come spend a week with the kid and then not see him for two years. Oh yeah. I think you need to establish um, if he wants to be, exactly what you're saying, if you want to be a part of this kid's life, like, okay, great. So you need to be financially, you don't just to get to come in every once in a while, be the cool dad who takes the kid to like the food your mom won't let you eat and do all that stuff and then drops you back off and you don't hear again. Like mm-hmm. being a parent is so much less about the DNA and so much more about like consistently being there for someone, being a role model and all of those other things that it doesn't, I don't necessarily think you need the person who has your DNA to raise you. But if that person wants to be a part of your life, I don't think that they can just use that as an excuse to give whatever they can give at that time. Mm -hmm. I think it's important that like your kid has stability and um, also that your mental health is feeling great. Like if this is taxing and really tolling on you emotionally, you're not really going to, I don't think you'll feel like you're, I mean, I say this like not a parent, but like (laughs) if I'm like feeling like anxious and depressed and really stressed about all these different things, like I can't imagine being, I don't know, like feeling capable of like being strong for somebody else if you're constantly like just, I don't know, like sacrificing stuff just because he wants to be a part of his mm-hmm. life at certain points. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that you have to be really aware too that this person is probably going to come in and really use this as a bargaining chip to try to get back with you. And you just need to be very aware that it's not about you in this relationship or anything. It's about you and this kid. Mm -hmm. And what's best for this kid is to be around people that are stable, that love him, that are there, that are actually showing up, that aren't saying like, oh, I want to be a dad, but don't show up to be a dad. You know what I'm saying? So like this person has uh, definitely a connection to your kid and let them be a part of his life. But you are the mom, you are in charge, and you, at the end of the day, just need to make sure that your kid knows who loves him and regardless of what this dad's going to do, uh, knows that he always has you and, mm-hmm. you know, potentially this partner of yours that has really stepped up to the plate. Yeah. And you can only control what you can control. And that's really the theme of this episode. Mm-hmm. I feel like. You can only control what you control. Yeah. And you can't control what this dude's going to do. You couldn't control what he did when he left. And I think you just need to keep that in your head and remember that, like, he's going to pull all these little emotional things on you to, oh, a kid needs a family and blah, blah, blah. A kid needs a family, but a family can be a variety mm-hmm. of things and has nothing to do with the person that genetically you're related to. Yeah. As someone who's been disowned by their dad and doesn't talk to him, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> you, can, yeah. It's per, you can be a perfectly adjusted person and just uh, have really good friends and family around you. It doesn't have to be a mom and a dad. No, and I think it's the people who step up to the plate when they're not DNA obliged to do so. Those mm-hmm. are the people who really want to be there for you are the ones who don't ha- like technically have to. Those are the ones who are really choosing to yeah. be a part of your life as opposed to ones who feel obligated. Yeah, and just have a good support system and and that could include your family, this partner of yours family, friends to make sure that like whatever little trips and like little tricks this guy tries to pull that you always have someone there to make sure that you're okay and the kids okay and that and the when moments where you feel weak that you have someone that's strong with you to tell mm-hmm. this guy like eh, that's not Fuck what off. we're doing, yeah. Okay guys, we're going to take a break and we'll be right back. Audiobooks are great for helping you be a better you. For our audience, Audible is offering a free audiobook with a 30-day free trial. If you want to listen to it, Audible has it. Just go to audible.com slash blame or text blame to 500-500 and browse their unmatched selection of audio content. Download a title free and start listening. It's that easy. Audiobooks are a great sidekick for summer activities like hiking, sunbathing on the beach, running, road tripping, walking, sitting, laying down, napping while you are still kind of awake, and enjoying downtime outdoors and more. Listening is a better way to binge content you love while doing the things that you love. Audible's selection of audiobooks, original shows, news, comedy, and more is unmatched anywhere, and you will find what you are looking for. I have been a fan of Audible for a very long time. Fun fact, I'm pretty sure it was like the first anything sponsored I did ever. Um, And I am just like a book nerd. I really love reading, but I also have terrible, terrible, terrible ADHD. And I also need to clean my apartment. So sometimes it's hard to sit down and just open a book and read it and do nothing else. I love multitasking so I can clean my apartment 
and listen to a book. I feel like I'm just absorbing more knowledge. And also, let's talk about how great audiobooks are in general. I've always been a fan of them. Used to get them from the library as a kid. And sometimes it's nice to have people read your books to you, even school books. You know, I did that in college, guys. I literally would download audible books that I had to read for school that I didn't like. And I'd be like, okay, let's just have someone read it to me like a princess. But who doesn't want to feel like a princess? Audible has the largest selection of audiobooks on the planet, which lets you fill your summer with more stories like The Last Mrs. Parrish, which is what I am currently listening to right now. I have gotten very into like true crime and then also not even specifically true crime, just like, you know, like scary kind of thriller stuff where like women are like being psycho, but also like really powerful and cool. I'm very, very interested in it. I'm enjoying it so much. Um, I would also love recommendations from you guys because I've been, you know, listening to a lot of books. So I need some more. Audible helps you listen to more books by letting you switch seamlessly between devices, picking up exactly where you left off, whether it's on your phone, through your car, from a tablet, or at home on Amazon Echo. You can get through tons of books, hands and eyes free while doing almost anything. Get a free audiobook with a 30-day free trial at audible.com slash blame or text blame to 500-500. That's Audible, A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot com slash blame or text blame to 500, 500 Okay, guys, we are back from our break and on to the next call. Hi, Megan. So I'm 16 years old and um, basically my ex-girlfriend and I want to have sex with each other, but I'm currently not having sex with anybody but she's having sex with somebody else. And she told me that um, it doesn't mean anything and, like, it's fine, like, that she, like, doesn't know if she's going to have sex there again. And it's only been, like, two or three times, but it kind of, like, bugs me a little bit. And, like, I feel like if I have sex with her that, like, I'm just going to be comparing myself to that girl the whole time. And, like, I don't know, but, like, at the same time, she's, like, the only person I want to have sex with because everyone else in my small town is ugly and... Like, I'm not trying to be rude and say, like, they're ugly, but, like, they're just not really my type. So um, I really don't know what to do. Like, should I have sex with her and just, like, be, like, your boss bitch and, like, tell myself that, like, I'm amazing and that I'm, like, fine and that this girl doesn't matter, even though it kind of bugs me a little bit and, like, is, like, it makes me feel a little weird? Or should I just be, like, you know, not do it but then not get laid? And she's also really good at fucking, so. Hold on just yeah. a second. Can you play the first call? She's called twice. Okay. Same so issue. This is, this is the first call time that she called. Okay. Um, I broke up with my girlfriend around seven months ago, or she broke up with me. And um, I want to keep having sex with her because the sex is absolutely bomb. And I'm not attracted to anybody else in this town. But she is, like, having sex with other people. But I really want to have sex with her. And, um... Like, she wants to have sex with me, but I feel like if I have sex with her, I'm just kind of alluring myself and getting into what she wants, but I really want to have sex with her. But I feel like if I do, I am going to be less of a strong, independent woman, and I really don't know what to do. So please help me. I love your podcast so much. Oh, my God, to be 16. You still like your ex. That's the issue. You still like your ex. You don't want to just have sex with her. You still have feelings for her, which is why you shouldn't have sex with her. You you don't need a partner to get off at all. And there will be other people in your life who will be just as awesome. If not, I'm sure will be even better. Yeah. No, it's not doesn't. It's not not only does like sleeping with her not make you a boss ass bitch. You're you just need to be frank with like, sure, the sex is great, but like you definitely still have feelings. Mm. Yeah. I mean, the fact that you're affected by her sleeping with other people, which, by the way, you broke up. So that's what people that are broken up do. They go sleep with other people. That's (laughs) part of that's part of this process. Yeah. And they have slept with other people and they will. And that's just part of I think. You know, it's also one of the things like you're 16. And so these are things that I've learned like in my 20s and 30s of like the feeling of jealousy, of comparing yourself to another person that Mm -hmm. someone's been with. And that's all that all comes down to insecurity. And and jealousy is like an emotion that we feel it's a natural thing. But giving into it and letting it dictate how you move through a situation is absolutely up to you. And I think as you get older, you're going to realize that you're going to come in contact with more and more people that you like and you want to sleep with that have slept with other people or are sleeping with other people and are casually dating. And so that's going to be a part of like figuring out what the limit is for you. Can you be with someone that's up with other people? Do you need monogamy? Why do you need monogamy? What does that say about, you know, like what is, what is it that you're looking for? But ultimately it's like, I think 
you want to fuck your girlfriend, your ex-girlfriend, got it. But in order, and she wants to sleep with you, great. But in order to do that, you have to figure out why it is it, why are you kind of holding on to this past situation with someone that she says, I've slept with a few times, not super into it. Is it okay for the two of you just to have sex? Or do you, you looking for a relationship? Is really like, mm-hmm. do you want to get back together with her? Is that what's affecting it? And at the end of the day, it's like that you have to start trusting, I think, in the fact that when people are like, I want to be with you or I want to sleep with you, which are two very different things, trust that they're not going to have sex with you if they don't want to have sex with you. And if they want to have sex with someone else, it's because they want sex with someone else. You can't compare yourself to what they've had with anyone else. Mm-hmm. It has nothing to do with what's going on between you and this girl. Yeah. And I also think right now you're trying to make an ex into a fuck buddy and that oh, it doesn't work. It's so hard. It doesn't, it just doesn't work unless you end on a place where you're like, you know what? Whoa. Like we were just, it, it could not have gotten serious. You'd have to be like, wow, we were just way better as friends. And yeah. honest, like I, and I've dated guys that like we established early on, like we're just fuck buddies. That's all we are. Dated them post that. And it was like, oh, well, there's a reason why we didn't date in the first place. And we were just fuck buddies. We don't really have those feelings there anymore. Yeah. And there's a reason why you and this girl weren't fuck buddies in the first place, because those feelings were there. If those yeah. feelings were ever there, I don't think you can turn around and have casual sex. Cause at the same time you're saying, or it's casual sex with her. Cause you're saying like, oh, like affected about her having feelings for this other girl. That's your telltale sign. Like yeah. if if you have issues with her being with other people, that's not a fuck buddy. That's not someone you can just have sex with. That's someone who you, you're thinking about who other people that they're sleeping with. That's yeah. not okay. Like it, the, the, you're breaking the code of the, the <laughs> fuck buddy. It's like, it's so hard because like, but I've had breakups where it's like, oh, I just missed the dick. Right. And, yep. mm-hmm. and, and you can separate that, but more often than not, once you start getting whatever, you start remembering all of the other memories and all of the emotions. And it's just so hard to disconnect that again. I think this girl broke up with you and you're using the ploy of like, well, I just want to fuck her to get back in, but yeah. really you're not entirely over this. The ideal situation is to sleep. If you're going to have fuck buddy situation, someone that when you're done having sex, you're like, cool don't want to hang out with you. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. Awesome. Like not, oh, you're on Tinder right after swiping left and right. Awesome. It shouldn't good, affect you. Good for you. I'm doing the same thing, in yeah. fact. And so once you start getting your feelings about it, there's something more going on there yeah. that you need to deal with. And also like, just because this is the like great sex that you've had right now, that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean that that doesn't exist elsewhere. Like, it definitely exists elsewhere. Find another fuck buddy. Um, completely. And also I think you're like, exactly like you're saying when you're missing the sex of that too, so much of sex is, I, I think because you guys had, um, I don't know, like emotion driven sex. Cause you had feelings for her. Yeah. That that's probably a huge reason why you still, it wasn't just that, like you had uh, feelings for her. That's the worst emotional sex that gets to you. It's just uh, like, you can't shake. It's like you're haunted. It completely. It's, I feel like my vagina is haunted that. by my ex. It's <laughs> yeah. just like, I miss it. And you're like, no, stop it. He's bad for you. My, I love my, originally in my head, I was like, well, all three of you should just sleep with each other. But then I realized I, I was like, thing. you're 16. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, that was my initial. And I was this like, this is so extra what's <laughs> happening right now. Oh, yeah. Oh my gosh. And also that new girl is just going to, someone, someone's going to get left out. That's true. I mean, listen, y'all got hands. Y'all figure it out. Y'all do. But one person got feelings. <laughs> That's true. You all have <laughs> hands, but only one of you has feelings. feelings. Quote of the episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Go fuck other people so you stop feeling this masturbate. way. And you don't compare. Hey, that too. Yeah. Toys are your friend. Yeah. And also like, it's like a habit or an addiction or whatever. It takes 30 days to make a habit, break an addiction, <laughs> which probably not like all addictions seem you like know, sometimes take it longer. takes 10 months. It's whatever. Yeah. It's up to you. <laughs> but I'm like, you need to like stop talking to her. Give yourself yeah. the time to actually move past this and not be like, oh, I'm still talking about her. Oh, like I'm still feeling these like feelings for her sexually and all that stuff because you're still constantly talking to her. I mm-hmm. think you need a clean break before you're like, oh, wait, that's okay. I can other, I can have sex with other people. All of this can be. This isn't just like all like riding on her. Yeah. <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> you gotta start going to different towns and getting on yeah. Tinder and you need to yeah. find yourself an Instagram girlfriend or something. Yeah. Get yourself an Instagram thought. Start sexting with someone on Instagram. Whatever. Totally. Omegle? Do people yeah, do that? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Fine. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, You're also 16 though. Be safe. So, yeah, I was also going to say, it's like I'm giving advice to like myself right now, but yeah. it's 16, you know, stay in school. Stay in school. <laughs> but also get laid. You've already done it. That's true. 
on to the next one. I have been an online sugar baby for maybe a year and a half now. And I, it kind of started with me like sending nude photos in exchange for money to men. And then I kind of got regular people who would, you know, pay me an allowance per week for certain things online and phone calls and blah, blah, blah. And I, you know, I'm a university student, so I'm a broke ass hoe if I don't uh, be an online sugar baby. And I don't mind it. Like it's not something that sits um, uneasy with me. But anyway, um, my sister is also a university student and my sister is my best friend. And um, she is, was a broke ass hoe. So she decided to do this as well for about four weeks and then decided it wasn't for her, which is fine. And I've continued doing it. Um, and I met this man and originally he was giving me like a thousand dollars a week, um, just for online relationship, sugar baby, regular stuff. Um, but then we decided that we wanted to meet and I was very happy to meet. This was the first time I'd ever met anyone, um, from being a sugar baby. And I wanted to, because he seemed quite nice. Anyway, we met and I really enjoyed my time with him. And then we met again and I enjoyed my time with him. And then we met again and I really enjoyed my time with him. And we had so much sex and it was the best sex of my life. Um, and I wanted the sex. It wasn't um, that he made me feel like I needed to have sex or that he was paying me for the sex. But um, we did have sex. And then anyway, once I went home, he was like, hey, thank you so much for meeting up and having sex with me. Here's an extra 6000 for this week. So that was $7,000 for the week because we had had sex, which was not previously decided, but that's just what happened. Anyway, I told my sister being so excited, being like, oh my goodness, I can pay off so much debt, which is <laughs> exciting life, I know. But I was so excited to pay off my, all my debt. And my sister decided that um, she thought that I was a sex worker now and a prostitute and that my family needed to know. And she's told me that she would really like to tell my family because she thinks what I'm doing is wrong. Um, I'm not ashamed of what I do, but I just don't think my family would be comfortable knowing about my sex life. I mean, I like this man and we have sex because we like each other, but the relationship did start with him being my sugar daddy. Anyway, um, I guess my question is, what should I do? How should I talk to my sister about being more open-minded? I've told her that what she's saying is hurting my feelings. Um, the way she talks down to me, but she seems to think that her moral high horse needs to, um, you know, tell my family and I just don't know what to do about it. Wow. Your sister sounds like an asshole. (laughs) First of all, how, how, who has the audacity to do that when you have an email address connected to an account on this site that we're doing the sugar baby shit through? Like, who are you to like Like, hang out for a month and then be like, eh, not for me, but everyone else. That was my issue too. I'm like, well, I mean, if she comes forward, is she also going to be like, and I tried it, but like, I swear, like, I didn't like, I didn't like it. Like, it's Uh, like, I I only smoked weed one time. It wasn't even that great. Like, I didn't even get high. Like, no, bitch. Like, you were still, you know what sugar babying is. I would, uh, yeah, see, I'm vindictive. I would tell my parents first that she was doing sugar baby shit. And then when she came back and told them, I'd be like, classic projection. <laughs> show me the receipts. Can you show me a bank account? Oh my That's, gosh. oh, who's this guy? This is the guy I've been dating. Prove me wrong. That's so funny. But then you gotta change, you gotta change your like sugar baby account or whatever so yeah. she can't find it and show your parents. Wow. Um, yeah, I'm a Scorpio. So I'll, I'll that was amazing. first. I love that though. I'll take the power. Don't, <laughs> don't tempt me. Don't tell me you're gonna do something. I will do it first and I will make you look like an asshole. <laughs> I would create a fake account for her on the site and I would like list her prices and I would send it to your parents and be like, oh my God, I can't. I would actually, I wouldn't send it to your parents. I would send it to another family member, like an aunt or an uncle and say, I found this. I don't know what to do. And then just let them tell your parents first. Don't, get, don't, don't still ever fuck with me. Yeah. Like, I think that's what we've learned from this. Don't fuck with me. That's amazing. Anonymous tip. Wow. Um, wow. Uh, yeah. I mean, this is, uh, this sucks because she by all accounts, might go and tell your parents regardless of what you say or don't say to her yeah. and whatever connection. So it is one of those things where like, I think you just have to, I mean, I like my method to be I honest. Like I think too. that's a really good plan. I think um, you just got to be prepared. I think that's Be the prepared for the worst, which is yeah. your parents uh, having their opinions and being very upset. And I don't know what they're, you know, how the, the lengths that they'll go to like, is this a, I'm going to get disowned situation and kicked out of the house situation? Is but this you're like, you're financially I'm just, independent. I mean, <laughs> listen, you're making more money than I am. So yeah. like I'm here. Uh, but I think ultimately, I mean, 
from a moral standpoint, I think sex work is one of the things that I don't understand why it's criminalized the way that it is. I think that if you can go on Etsy and make fucking bracelets and sell them to people, I should be able to use my vagina however I want. Yes. And I think if anything, like there, in a perfect world, sex work would be legal and people would just be able to be taken care of and have health care and mm-hmm. have all the access that they need because that is, a, that is a form of currency. Like people are interested in that. And I don't understand why it's different than anything else. I think for your sister to have this like moral high ground of like, well, that's, well, now that you're getting paid for sex, that's prostitution and blah, blah, blah. First of all, he didn't tell me he was going to pay me beforehand. We had sex because I wanted to. And also that was a bonus. Okay. Yeah. For for the photos. I don't understand why she's okay with the photos and the videos and stuff, yeah. but she's like, I don't know that you liked each other and you hung out three times and had sex. I don't know how I feel about it. I understand being concerned, but at the same time, this is another bitch that's got to learn. Mm-hmm. This is not your life. Focus on yourself. And at the end of the day, don't come for me because you try to do this too and I will destroy you. You're just parents. doing it better than her. Like not to She's be just that- mad because she didn't make yeah. $6,000. I think that's really what it is. I think like you've got a great outlook with like, you're not embarrassed by this. And exactly like you're saying, I think- Don't I be think, embarrassed. No, and I think the only, the, the biggest issue we have with like sex work here is the fact that like, because it's, because it's criminalized, like we have so, so many people who aren't getting access to healthcare. And it's, it, that's the biggest issue I think here. I mm-hmm. I think like sex is such a normal, natural thing. And I mean, I'm like, pe- like I don't know. Like, people are in business for all these different things. I just don't think there's a difference between like, I slept with this guy I really liked and he gave me extra money this week. And between that and like, I married this guy that I don't really like, but it, he makes that, a lot of money and he exactly. can support the life that I want. Literally. I'm like, have you ever seen Real Housewives? Like, yeah. there's like it's so much of this. Like, I don't think it makes you a bad person at all. I think like you're, you're hustling to pay what you need to pay and you're being safe and you're being comfortable. And, and this is also like you, you, this all started from a regulated site in which like Mm -hmm. you, you took every step of being like, I'm comfortable with this. I'm comfortable with this. And you made all these decisions on your own accord. If your sister wants to be concerned for you, I, can she not see that you're okay? And like that you're, you're fine with all of this. You're not like a wounded, fragile person who's been through something like this. Like this to me just sounds, this just sounds judgmental. It doesn't sound like, oh, I'm worried about you. I have your best interest at heart. It's just being judgmental. It's vindictive. It's just like, I'm pissed that you're doing this. I have to go work a regular job and you're doing this. And so I'm gonna tell mom and and dad. So you get in trouble. Fuck you, bitch. And I think there's so much like the sexuality thing of like people wishing like she tried to do it she couldn't like not that I'm saying that she couldn't handle it but she couldn't handle it the and pussy like, wasn't worth it so then, you know be mad and then and, die and mad. then her sister is like totally comfortable doing this and owning her sexuality and being this boss ass mm-hmm. bitch and she's feeling like fuck I wish I could feel that empowered and confident to do that so she's just turning around and getting and like throwing this in your face oh my god I'm so vindictive I would totally <laughs> just like I would just go to them first and then I would also uh, plan b I would create like a business plan like a deck that I would just like, you know, use like Adobe or whatever. And I would just be like, this is my business plan moving forward, mom and dad, if I choose to go down this road. And this is how much money I'd be making a month. And this is how I'd be applying it yes. to the principal on my student loans. Yeah. <laughs> like, I would make it a very appealing offer. I mean, your parents are gonna be, aren't going to be okay with it. And it's going to be a huge thing. But at the end of the day, like, listen, this girl. You take care of you. Your sister and- better know. Don't ever tell me anything <laughs> because I will go. You, oh, you're cheating on your boyfriend. Guess who's getting a phone call tonight? Ooh, you, you say shit about your friend. Guess who's getting an email tonight? Like I would. I'm a Scorpio. No, I love it. I would ruin someone's life. I think, I mean, I think ultimately at a certain point, like if she's trying to come fuck up your life for all of this stuff, I think like we're saying, prepare for the absolute worst. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't, I, I don't, I think no matter what, if it comes from you or your sister saying what you do, it's going to be equally as bad. I don't think you need to go to your parents and beat them, beat your sister to the punch. I think they'll be just as upset if they hear it from her versus if they hear it from you. And the chance that she doesn't go tell them, I don't know. I just wouldn't go tell them because what if she like was just like, what if she knows ultimately that like you can, you can expose the fact that she was doing this too. So maybe she's just kind of like, yeah. saying it and then if you then like well you know what I, it should come from me and then what if she never actually planned on telling me yeah I mean I would <laughs> this isn't great advice but I would just lie about it and <laughs> That's what I, yeah <laughs> and I would be like I, she's just jealous because I don't flirt with her boyfriend or whatever or something yeah. like her someone likes me that she likes and she's like creating this all in her head but if you do lie about it you have to really like cover your tracks to make sure there's nothing that she's gonna be able to pull up on her computer and show and do parents. you live with her sister your, your parents also, or your sister also needs to know that she is potentially losing a relationship with you over an argument that has nothing to do with your parents and yeah. over a disagreement in it's lifestyle immature. that has nothing to do with her and she needs to grow the fuck up. Yeah. Maybe I'm with you float on that. her some money. <laughs> 
Yeah, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> maybe be like, here's a five hundred dollar shut the fuck up fee. Yeah, and you will be signing this legal document. Yeah. Oh, give her an NDA. Buy her a purse Family's and then the give worst, her an NDA. Dude. Family is like single handedly the worst. One hundred percent. Good God. Do what you want. Yeah. Screw who you want and make money how you want. Yeah. You're crushing it. I love it. Yeah. Go you. I approve. I do too. I'm proud of you and your vagina. Life goals. Okay, guys. It's time for Producer's Corner. Um, So for this episode, is it a callback or a response? This is a response. Okay. So someone is uh, going to respond to some advice that we gave on another episode. <laughs> I hope they roast you. I Don't say that. <laughs> I've been, I've banned Like, that. yeah, fuck her too. Yeah, I don't agree with anything she said. She's the worst. So the reason why I picked this one, well, initially oh I sent Megan Tonjes <laughs> an email <laughs> on accident that yes. had questions Agreed. from an episode. <laughs> and the uh, greatest moment of my life. Yeah. The greatest. So, uh, because, you know, same name, whatever. <laughs> and so she saw a question. I did. And so, I was, and I heard that she had a lot of opinions, according to Mitchell Davis, about oh, this. Oh, Mitchell lies. <laughs> First of all, don't trust anything Mitchell Davis ever says. Let me tell this story though, because so I'm up, I'm up one night. I'm like sitting in my bed on my laptop, checking my email for once. Not gonna respond to emails, and I see this email pop up, and it's like questions for the podcast or something. I'm like, what? So I, I, in my head, I'm thinking. Oh, I said yes to something or I forgot about something that's scheduled. Okay. And so I click into this little Google. Doc. And then also in my head, I'm thinking I'm about to get like a virus. That was the other one. I was like, this is a bad news. a really creative virus. So I podcast. Know. I've gotten weird messages before. So I like, I click into it and I'm looking through it. And I'm like, I don't know what any of this is for. But it's I, all but says, I see hey, my name. Megan. Hey, <laughs> Megan. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, is there, cause I have a podcast. So I'm like, oh, did Key set up like a weird Google doc? And like, it's like automatically sending things to me. Like, what is going on? And then I zone in on this question. That's like something about Mitchell Davis and anal sex. Okay. So that's what we'll get into. So this is a response to the caller from episode 20 with Mitchell. Yeah. The best part about, but to end of that, that story too, the best part about that was when I responded back to the email to be like, I don't know what this is. <laughs> You responded and you were like, oh, no, so sorry. Wrong, Megan. And then the the file went private, <laughs> but not before I fucking screenshot it. Yeah, you did. And sent it to Mitchell Davis. And I was like, I don't know what just happened or why there's a question. It was like, hey, heard about the anal sex it's thing. We're going to yeah, play okay, it. Okay, good. Yeah, oh, we're, we're going to play so it. so funny. Talking you into it. So um, <laughs> the, uh, the original episode with Mitchell, someone called in um, saying that their boyfriend had mentioned before that he'd really wanted them to have anal sex. They tried and she just really wasn't into it. And he understood that she wasn't into it and was okay with it, but she was still feeling guilty about not having anal sex and wanted to know there's ways that she could actually enjoy it and what she should do and all that stuff. And mm. so Mitchell and I's advice was very much, I mean, Mitchell came up with this story that some guy's dick got stuck in some girl's butt, which then he realized might not actually have been yeah. true. Um, but adventure. we basically said, uh, if you're not, if someone's fan, you can ruin someone's fantasy by not being into it. And it's better to, if he does, if it's not a deal breaker for him, not to force yourself to be into something. Cause you're just going to ruin the whole fantasy for him. Uh, agree. Cause you won't be that into it. And also there's nothing wrong with like wanting anal sex and not wanting anal sex. Also off your point of like the threesome situation, yeah. of guys always wanting girls to make out and like fuck each other. The, the, I swear to God, the line that they all say too is, well, just two girls though, not guys. Cause they always ruin it. Uh -huh. It was, fuck you. Fuck, First of all, yeah. if I'm fucking a girl, then I'm also fucking two dudes. Like something's 100%. happening. I'm getting like, something for me. Exactly. Like, you get two and I get what I get. What? Like I, I do this thing that you want me to do. Cause it turns you on. And then I don't, what I just get, I, okay. Yeah. Or like, I'd be, I would also be into like uh we, we are having sex with you, but not each other. And then I can have sex with another dude, but you don't have to have sex with him Ooh, either. Yeah. So that's, that's a good fair. compromise. Fair. Very fair. Much, thinking, much, much. I've been more thinking fair. about this a lot lately. <laughs> Drawing up propositions. <laughs> All right, so okay. I'm going to play the uh, follow-up. Okay. Well, it's not a follow-up. It's a response. <laughs> They're married now. <laughs> so I don't actually have a question for you. This is a um, response to your most recent episode with Mitchell um, Davis um, responding to the, the caller that was asking about, like, butt stuff. Um, I am 28. And up until this year, I was on the same page as you, uh, where, like, the butthole is for pooping, and that's it. Don't go near it. But, um, I don't know. Like, recently, I just got curious, and my boyfriend and I did some research. We talked about it. 
and we did it. And um, honestly, it is <coughs> the best orgasm, <clears throat> excuse me, the best orgasm that I have ever had. Um, uh, like, uh, and like Mitchell was saying, like, if you don't want it, even if you're like subconsciously nervous about it, your inner butthole <laughs> will clench and you won't be able to get anything in there and it'll be a bad time for everyone. Um, but like, if you warm it up, get a lot of foreplay happening, uh, and then you like ease into it. <laughs> There's, like, it is a lot of work, but once you get there, it is so worth it. And the thing that a lot of people forget to talk about, um, because a lot of people are just, like, disassociate, like, you have a vagina and a butthole, and a lot of people are just like, well, if we're going to focus on the butthole, we're going to focus on the butthole. But if you also have a vagina, you'll also have a clitoris, and that is the most important part. At least for me and, like, a couple of the people that I've talked to, that is the most important part. I missed the end of that because I think I jumped when she sounded very excited and, um, I, and I lost it. She then talked about how uh, she wasn't sure. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I my go-to thing is just to make fun of you, which I'm not trying to do. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not at all, at all. That was a great call. But she, she, she just said, um, if you have a vagina, <clears> then you <throat> also have a clitoris. And she's talked to a couple people and they both agree that the clitoris is the best part. Which okay. I'm like, all right. you could do a survey of a lot more women and you're going to get that answer. It's not right. just like you and your friend. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that I think she was trying to say that if you pay attention to both, yeah. then that's what makes oh, it okay. Good. Yeah, a combination. I mean, first of all, I'm so happy for you, and <laughs> dude. You seem like I'm. I'm satisfied. Yeah, bless, bless you, and and for finding something that makes you feel great. Uh, it's even better listening to this as opposed to reading the transcription and email. <laughs> I can say it just didn't quite catch the the emotion of it, but I appreciate you, and. Uh, I think, listen, as far as the previous call, I think that this is someone that obviously tried. It wasn't really working. And I don't think that they're under op any obligation to keep trying, especially if they're boyfriends. Like, it's not a big deal. Yeah. Like, it's something I want. Fantasies don't have, ooh, then I got really loud. Fantasies are great, but you can, there's a lot of different fantasies you can explore. It doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily mean like if you don't like the exact same thing, the relationship is over. Like people are very understanding and it's not, it doesn't mean they're going to go cheat on someone the next time they have a chance because they want to have anal sex. Um, what's so funny about this too is that Mitchell and I ran into each other <laughs> at like out at a restaurant last week and we started talking about this exact same thing because the email we were laughing. I think he made the, the screenshot, his background on his phone for a while, like he was dying. <laughs> And we agree in a similar way of like, I think anything can feel good. Most things can feel good with the right person. Mm -hmm. And if you're in the right frame of mind, but at the end of the day, no one's obligated to think that everyone feels, everything feels great. Yeah. So if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't try things out. I mean, I'm, I'm totally down for the, like, you know, oh, I, th I, th I thought I wouldn't like this one thing and then I tried it and I love it and it's great. Keep your, your options yeah. open. And, uh, and, you know, never close yourself off, but if anal you know, sex not for you, it's not for you. Yeah. And that also just means it's not for you forever kind of a thing. And I mean, like, I definitely have and still have visceral reactions when people talk <laughs> about it. Megan's got some issues. I do. It. Well, just because I know, and that's just me personally, but like, all right, talk to me five years from now. Maybe I'll be super into it, but I no shaming in that. And I feel like I definitely like played into the comedy a little more in the last call of, I just kept talking about my butthole clenching, which is not a lie. Definitely does. Every time we talk about anal, but uh, I don't. Did, I don't think it's wrong or gross when other people are into that kind of stuff. Like I'm sure yeah. there's stuff that like I like that I'm into that I, other people would not be into. But I think it's the whole thing of you need to own what you like, be open to potentially liking new things and be curious and be comfortable with your partner. Like mm -hmm. the, I mean, when you think about like the first person you had sex with and like how fucking vanilla it was <laughs> and you're like, good God, like that's like, but that's so much to do with like your own comfort level and like exactly mm -hmm. what you're saying, the partner you're with, the headspace you're in. Yeah. So I think like never, there's some things that you never have to loop back to if you're like, yeah, nope, not for me. But um, that doesn't like, there's nothing wrong with people who are into that kind of stuff. Whenever, just, whenever I think about anal sex, I think of, there's this comedian, Ali Wong, who I'm obsessed with. Mm -hmm. And I just remember I her, her, I remember her just talking about how she loves anal sex. And she talks, the, the specific line I think is maybe if we fuck different holes, we'll feel like we're fucking different people. <laughs> <laughs> and I think about that all the time. So you know what? Maybe you'll get to a point in your relationship where you're like, I need you to fuck a different hole. So I feel like this so is different and new. Funny. 
That's great. I just think of um, when the when Amy Schumer texted off of Katie Couric's phone to Katie Couric's husband <laughs> saying, I want to have anal tonight. And he responded again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that. she did a follow up. She went back on, uh, she oh, went on a late night and said that. I was you like, know, Kate listen, Couric. Listen. Her best friend is um, my landlord. Oh, there you go. Yeah. I met her at VidCon. And she's like, I hear you live in so-and-so's place. And you're and like, like, I hear that you have anal sex with your husband. <laughs> and I heard he said again. <laughs> you know, what's so funny is that like, I mean, I've never had anal sex. It's not something that's super on my list, but you know, who knows? Someone could exactly. you know, trick me into something. <laughs> uh, but I do think that I, when I think of all the things, that's not even, that doesn't even register as like a kinky thing no. anymore for me. Cause I'm like, that's just something that's, people do. Yeah. I also think maybe I have PTSD because when I was a kid, I used to get really bad anxiety and wouldn't poop. And so I have this thing. <laughs> and I'm just like, it's like a constant patient related yeah. fear no and that's what it probably is I had to go to a therapist because I was like so anxious and stressed I wouldn't poop when I was like four or something and they stick those things at my butt and now Listen. I just don't I don't want anyone sticking anything that's my fair. butt maybe one day though someone come along that you want them yeah. to stick something but maybe you want to give a little foot job maybe you want to exactly. like you know the, tie some up in a swing I don't know it's your life. where would you hang it that's what I think about with like a sex swing, like how do you- I don't even I don't even know how to properly hang a fucking photo up on That's the wall. Literally, because what I'm I like, think this of. is I don't have a level. This is too much. And now imagine two people's body weights in a fucking swing. No. You can get a stand though. What? Like, like- I'm too fat for this. I got <laughs> sent to, I got sent a sex swing once that like attaches to your door, and I was like, who's getting a deposit? To your door? Who's getting a deposit back on this apartment? Because not my fat ass when this breaks off completely. Well, like I we're getting even- stuck on it. Oh no, I don't ma'am. even trust like the over the door shoe stuff. Mm-mm. Like, I don't trust that. No. I don't trust chairs. So I'm not here for anything. No, no, no. no. I just like that. You're not going to get me with a sex swing. Oh, I just also, what does it look like? It just, in my head, it just looks like that, like a trapeze. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah. You know what? Very similar. Is it just looking like trapeze? I don't know. I don't have enough. You know what? I live in Los Angeles. I pay a lot for a little space. I don't have enough room for a That's sex swing. That's what I'm thinking about. You know? You got a lot of room. No, but this is what I'm saying. <laughs> you like, definitely have you room for a, a sex room. swing. There's a whole there. corner over there. You could <laughs> yeah. just be fucking and swinging. But here's the thing. Like, you would have to put it in like a bedroom or a private area because like, how do also, your parents come over for Christmas? Well, it doesn't work like, with my aesthetic. Like, where, like, where? You can get a white one. You got to get a white one with like some rose gold <laughs> accents. But like, put some like, like lights some, around. I would some need some like, succul- crystals. Some succulents some falling succulents. next to it. This actually sounds like a beautiful it fucking does. swing. I'll put it right there where the Christmas wow. tree is. I'm into it. Me too. Uh, everyone can take pictures in front of it. I'm post. waiting for like a sex swing company to reach out to you and want to send We one. make aesthetically pleasing sex swings, Megan. Yeah. Would you like to take an Instagram Tumblr, one? Instagram <gasps> ready. Yes. I started working on my Instagram theme recently and I'm really excited about it. Oh my God, I'm so excited for it's you. all I think about every it's day. It's all I think about every day too. <laughs> for years. I'm not that bright. <laughs> not a lot going up here. It's okay. You're cute. Thank you. You're Someone welcome. told me I was cute, not funny once. And I didn't speak to him for <laughs> two weeks. And I was so mad. And except he told another girl that she was funny, not cute. And she wasn't mad at all. Wow. He sounds like someone who's just not going to get fucked by anybody. Yeah. You'd be surprised. I still love him though. But I was oh. really mad. Yeah. And then he realized I was funny. There you go. Sometimes you have, have to work for it. Oh my God. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. You were great. Anytime. This you is fun. You were very good at this. Thank you. And not, okay. I don't want to say you were being, you're bitchy. But like, I felt like sometimes <laughs> I felt like. I, when I give advice and like, sometimes yeah. I yell at people mm. and tell them that they're wrong. I yeah. really like that you were on the same page as me. Oh, good. Yeah. I like to give some tough love yes. every now and then. Don't Thank make you. mistakes that I've made. Yeah. Be better. Be better. Okay. I love that. Cause I, I, I can't fuck with everyone who's just trying to coddle everyone all the time. Sometimes you need a swift kick in the ass. Oh yeah. I know. Aura. Sometimes you need to be told ass. to get your shit together. Yeah. And to stop being concerned about birth control of people that aren't you. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm agreeing with that. Well, where can everyone check you out on the internets? And Ooh. don't tell them where you live. <laughs> right? <laughs> Thank God. Uh, you can find me at Megan Tonjes on most things. My YouTube channel is Tonjes, uh, and I also do music. So you can find me on the iTunes. And I have a podcast called Adventures in Roommating. We put out two episodes a week, and it's me and my roommate who are we're a couple of friends. So have fun. Amazing. Well, um, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, leave us a review in the podcast app. And um, yeah, you guys can also send us your calls. If you have a follow-up call, if you are another responder, you want to talk about anal sex some more? For sure. <laughs> Actually, I don't know how much my butthole can take it. Like, I'm just <laughs> clenching. I'm going to be constipated for days. Oh, um, no. <laughs> so uh, leave us a voicemail at 310-694-0976. And if you're an international caller, email meganpodcast at gmail.com. 
um, do people, do you have an email address? People can just send you like spreadsheets about anal sex. <laughs> you know, let me get back to you. I have to make <laughs> sure I have to see on. what emails you've taken. Like yeah. you might've grabbed like anal sex, Megan at yeah, gmail.com. I have that one. And I have anal Megan too. Anal I like, Megan at I like anal Megan at gmail.com. Yeah. 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 I've got a lot of AOLs and a lot of hot mails. Okay, good. I'll yeah. get on the Yahoo then. Yeah. Hop on that Yahoo. Um, yeah. So we will, we will talk to you guys in, in a week. Oh, and also this is on YouTube. If you want to watch on YouTube too. Where Boom. you could see faces Done. and facial reactions. There was a lot of facial reactions, Bless. at least on my end. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> okay, we'll see you guys next week. Goodbye. Bye. Don't Blame Me is a production by me, produced, directed, and edited by Melissa Demons, camera operator Shireen Younes, post-production sound by Chris Henry, production assistant Julie Carley, and music by Giacomo Picasso and Ryan Hunter. I'll see you guys next week, and don't blame me if your life, you know, completely fucks up before then. <laughs> oh.